Hey everyone, what's up? All right, so in this video, we're going to be finding the reaction at the roller support for this beam shown. This is an indeterminate structure right now, so we're going to have to use compatibility to our advantage. And we're going to use two different methods to solve the compatibility equation the principle of virtual work, and then the moment area method to check it. All right, so first things first, let's lay out our steps. Number one, we have to release the structure. We can't solve this structure as it is uh, too many reactions. So let's release it, make it um, statically determinate, and then we'll create a compatibility equation which will solve for the redundant that we choose. So in the first step, we're gonna choose a redundant, the second step, we're going to use superposition to make an equation, and that equation is, is um, really, it can be made because of compatibility, and we'll get there. And then third, we're going to solve for the equation components, so that in step four, we can ultimately solve the equation itself for the redundant value. But when we're solving for the equation components, we can use any method to get these values, beam tables, principle of virtual work, moment area method, and the latter two we're going to be using right now. So yeah, and then number four, when you have the equation components, you can just solve the equation for the redundant value. Okay, now we have our steps. That's very nice, peace of mind. We know where to start with our solution. So first things first, let's release the structure. And I think it's wise to choose the right end in this case. You can choose otherwise and try and work it out. And in fact, I encourage that. That'd be super. Let me know how it goes for you. All right, so first, we're going to choose the roller, as I said. So here is our release structure. Second step, compatibility. So let's draw out um, what the structure would look like released with the real loads. Okay. And then we're going to add in the release structure with a, with a redundant load, basically a unit load in the direction of the, of the redundant that we removed. Okay, so here's the release structure with our real loads, the moment MO at the right side and B. And then here's our release structure with a load corresponding to our redundant. And together, when we add these up, we get our actual structure, but not quite because we don't know the value of this redundant. So we're going to put in a value of 1, and we're going to multiply that whole system by x. And x will be that redundant value that we end up solving for, because x times 1 is just x. So x is our redundant value. So we don't know x. And here we can draw our... Um, displaced shapes as a result of the real loads in this top one and that's we're going to call big delta BO and then in the second one we'll draw the deflection at end B and that one we're going to call small delta BB basically a load at the uh, sorry the displacement at B as a result of the load at B and we can notice that one is negative and one is positive so Let's draw our axis here in red, just positive is up. Okay, so our compatibility equation. So big delta BO plus X times small delta BB equals zero. And that's it. We just have to find delta BO and delta BB. Okay, I'm actually going to stop calling it big delta and small delta. That's ridiculous. Um, but, but you can see here, compatibility just means that there can be no gaps in the structure and that it must fit together well, and that at the supports, the support, um, the shape of the supports must agree with the support condition. So it must be in 90 degrees if it was a fixed end. It must have a zero displacement uh, in the y direction, let's say, if it was a roller reacting in the y direction. You get the idea. Okay, so now let's use the principle of virtual work to solve for those two things. Big delta BO and small, oh man, I did it again. Never mind. Delta BO and delta BB. We're going to solve for those two things, and then that will allow us to find X. So here's our principle of virtual work equations. I've shown them here. And now let's just redraw quickly, because I was on the other page, 
let's just redraw our release structure with the real loads here. So we had the MO at end B, and that's going to result in a reaction of MO at end A in the opposite direction. And we can see here our moment equation is just MO for that one. And we drew, we drew our deflection there. And then here our, on the other side, let's draw our virtual loading system. Um, so we have the one unit load at the far end. That's going to result in a moment at the fixed end of L. And we're going to get a moment starting at L and tapering down to zero at the free end. So um, if we draw our axis from the right side to the left side, it actually makes our lives a little bit simpler. We can see for the real system, MP just equals MO. And for the virtual system, MQ equals X. So it's zero, and then it's L at the one end, so it just equals X. So let's start by solving for delta BO. So from this equation, Q times delta BO is the integral from zero to L of MQ MP over EI times DX. And we can just plug it in because we actually have all these components. Delta BO is the integral from zero to L of X times the negative MO over EI, and it's integrated over DX, as we said. So yeah, that's pretty simple right there. We get delta BO is negative L squared MO over 2 EI. And you can double check that if you want to ensure that the units would come out as distance units, and they would. And similar thing, solving for delta BB, we can get that it's the integral from 0 to L of X squared DX over EI. And that just means it's X cubed over 3 EI. Plug in your L. Uh, you know, integration, good stuff. Anyway, so delta BB is L cubed over 3 EI. So that actually was pretty painless once we set it up correctly. If we had chosen our X at the other end, going to the right, it might have been a little more difficult. And now we can recall com from compatibility that the delta BO plus X delta BB equals zero. Plugging these things in and doing a little bit of fancy cancellation results in solving for our redundant value x of 3mo over 2l and that is in the positive direction vertically. I guess that's an m0 but I'm just going to keep calling it an mo. We know this redundant is acting vertically because it came out positive and that's the direction we had our redundant drawn. Alright now it's time to check our work and we're going to confirm these results using the moment area method. So by coming at it from two different approaches, two completely different calculation approaches, this, is, this will be a good source of confirmation for us. So here's the equation, I put it here, for the moment area method, it's the equation specifically for tangential deviation. You can also have an equation for angle change between two points, but this is for the tangential deviation. And I'll illustrate that here. So the tangential deviation between A and B for what I've drawn here, it means that the tangent is going through the first letter, A, and the deviation is between B, the actual point on the beam at B, and the tangent line drawn through A. So this is the tangential deviation at B with respect to A. All right, so we always got to remember that the tangent passes through the first letter. So that's, I'm going to write that down because that's important to remember. The tangent passes through the first letter. And so what I've drawn here, TCD, that means the tangent's passing through C. And the X1 shown at the far end of the equation is the distance between the centroid of the area, of the moment area between the two points, and the second letter where you're actually computing the tangential deviation. So in that case, that's D that I've drawn there. So the actual formula, you just take the area between C and D, and I should have been more clear there. I'm sorry, guys. The area between C and D under the M over EI diagram. Wow, I'm sorry I did not put that there. Anyways, so it's the area under the M over EI diagram times this X1, which is the distance between the area centroid and where you're computing the tangential deviation. Okay, so let's do that for our first case here where we had MO, and remember it was constant the whole length, 
So we're going to divide that by EI. Our area is MOL over EI. And our centroid is right in the middle, so X1 bar is just L over 2. So TAB, which is the tangential deviation at B with respect to A, for our case, that was just delta BO. Because we have this fixed support at the left side, making the tangent at A completely horizontal, and solving that, you can see I just plugged in that area times that distance, came out with L squared MO over 2EI, and it's the same as principle of virtual work. Same value, so very good confirmation. Similarly, kind of running low on space here, but we're going to do this in the top right. So right now, we're trying to find the delta BB value. And so remember the shape, we had uh, L at the one end, we're going to divide that by EI now, zero at the other end. And the X1 bar is 2L over 3, that's easy. And I'm going to pipe down now, just because I realized I made a little error, and I want you to find it. So post the error in the comments if you see it. I'm playing it off as on purpose, find the error, treasure hunt style. And yeah, when you find it, put it in the comments. It's kind of an egregious error. I should know how to compute the area of a triangle. Oops, anyways. Okay, maybe I just pointed out my own error. And I said that that's same as the principle of virtual work, but it's different because of my error. Okay, whatever, that's embarrassing. Here we go, we can draw the final moments uh, all shown here. We got our MO on the far right, 3MO over 2EI. That was the reaction we computed. And so we need to have the same shear at the, at the left end. And then this moment reaction at the fixed end. We're just going to do a simple summation there of some of all the moments at A. And we know that our fixed end moment has to make up the difference. Okay, all done. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned a bit. And uh, yeah, pretty handy sometimes to check your work using a different method. Okay, you guys are awesome. Well, not awesome. You're pretty good. Okay, take care.